Hi mites, since we spoke about Australia last Friday, riots and protests have broken out over the weekend. Uh, who knows if they're fake and staged, but uh, they might be just what the government wants. <laughs> so many of you guys gave me shit for my accent last week. I Listen, I know it's horrible, I can't do accents, I thought my Australian one at least sounded like I was trying to do an Australian accent. And I even tried to do a French one for Macron, but I, I can't even fake it. Uh, so, this brings up one of the most significant things to be aware of, disinformation. All of what's been going on right now, I mean, our entire reality is basically a lie, created by one massive lie, with a bunch of small ones continuously every day that feed the agenda. And, you know, I'm curious, when are they going to stop counting the waves? You know, in Canada, we're on the fourth one now. I mean, double digits sound silly, so I can't imagine them going past six or seven. It's very difficult to discern the one truth bundled in with the 99 lies, their future plans versus the fear-mongering. If it's popular, if it's in the news, in the media, they want you to see it. Whether it's because of natural law and they have to tell you some truth, or because they're trying to mislead you and scare you into thinking negative all day. You know, we did a video on Ice Age Farmer, a few months ago how he's a complete shill you know a good example of one of their agents you know his goal being to spread fear throughout the public about food shortages and uh, crop losses and all that stuff here's another example someone hearing that a canadian hospital isn't scheduling appointments in september because the government is planning a lockdown is this true inside information or simply intentionally leaked as part of predictive programming so people expect it when it actually happens and don't question it or, or go crazy. You know, like all of the conspiracy theories that end up true less than a year later. We are set to find out on Monday details of the province's vaccine passport plan, but our Richard Zussman, who's joining us now from Victoria, has gotten some leaked information about what will be announced then. So Richard, what have you learned? Nitu, we know that organizations and interest groups have been briefed on what is happening on Monday, and we understand that the province will be moving towards a vaccine certificate program, something a lot of people have been waiting for. So we have a few details, so let's have a look at what we are going to expect for Monday. So we know that this will mean that for people to access non-essential services in this province, they will be required to be fully immunized. That will include movie theaters, sporting events, potentially include restaurants as well. It does not include hospitals and schools. The date of activation we will find out on Monday, but the province is expected to give time to people to get fully immunized. And here is the big reason why. We know that cases are rising. We also know there are a lot of people who are still not immunized. These are the vaccination rates for adults, those 18 plus fully vaccinated in this province, 75.5%, one dose, 83.8%. The province knows with the Delta variant in our communities, those numbers need to go up. And we'll get all the details on exactly how this is going to work, how people will prove they are fully immunized, and how businesses are expected to implement it on Monday when Premier John Horgan makes the announcement alongside Provincial Health Officer Dr. Bonnie Henry. There will be a lot of eyes and ears on that announcement for sure. Thanks for that preview. Again, our Richard Zussman in Victoria tonight. You know, that reporter's pretty cute, but her tailor must have used a king-sized bedsheet from Bed Bath & Beyond to make a pink blouse that would fit over those deltoids. The young lady doesn't seem too excited about announcing leaked information. Like, at least pretend to be excited. It's leaked information, not a regular news broadcast. Always funny how this leaked information is negative fear porn 100% of the time. It's never anything positive. Oh, we just leaked that everyone's going to be able to go outside next week. Yeah, imagine that happening. These people are all in the club. The newscasters, the ones at the top don't have to worry one bit because they have billions of dollars, private jets, everything in luxurious privacy. I like to refer to them as big-nosed rats eating caviar in caves. The millions and millions of minions of society members that work for them, that make less than me or you, are simply getting sailing shots, 
having underground gatherings, helping their agenda, ruining your lives and controlling you while being exempt from the rules themselves because they know what's really going on. It's like a parent forcing a child to eat vegetables while the parent is sitting there eating a tub of Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I mean, that's not a serious enough analogy for this, but you get the point. You know, this relates to the reason I started my YouTube channel, improving people's health so their body and mind works properly. You know, people have such short memories from the poison in the food and water that they can be easily herded as the sheep they resemble. It would be nice if we didn't have to spell it out for the sheeple, but that's what this compilation's for. I understand that holding out the, hey, if you wanna go to a ball game or a, or a concert, uh, you're gonna need to get vaccinated as a motivator for people to try and force them to get vaccinated. But like I said, what do you do with someone with an allergy? What do you do with someone uh, who's immunocompromised or someone who for reli religious or uh, you know, deep convictions uh, decides that no, they're not gonna get a vaccine? We're, we're not a country- What do you do? That well, we're not a country that makes vaccination mandatory, for example, but we want to encourage everyone to get it. We have made the decision that federal public servants need to be fully vaccinated. Uh, that is something that we're also applying to everyone who gets on a plane or a train in the coming months in Canada. But what about Canadians who want to go travel internationally? Like if you don't get vaccinated, could we see a scenario where you're not allowed? Well, th that is really going to be up to the country of, of destination. We intend to ensure that the public service gets vaccinated, that anyone on a plane or a train um, be fully vaccinated. I prefer to encourage people positively and sort of say, you know what, if we don't hit that, whatever it is, 80, 85% threshold of vaccinations, um, nobody's going to go to a Raptors game. Nobody's going to go uh, to, uh, to a concert because we won't be able uh, to get to that level. And, and that as an encouragement, I think is, is the, the right way to go. But the bottom line is, uh, if anyone who doesn't have a legitimate medical reason for not getting fully vaccinated, chooses to not get vaccinated, there will be consequences. Uh, we know uh, that the goal is not to punish people who don't want to get vaccinated, but it is to protect uh, Canadians from being infected by people who are unvaccinated. But there may be places or institutions that do decide that saying, no, 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 you need to have a vaccine to, to get here and proof of vaccination will be important. I'm just, I'm just concerned about the, the fairness aspects of that as well. The idea of certificates of vaccination for domestic use to decide, you know, if who can go to a concert or who can uh, go to a particular restaurant or engage in certain activities does bring in questions of equity, uh, questions of fairness. There are some people who, because of medical conditions or other reasons, uh, will not be able to get vaccinated. There are others uh, who are not on priority lists who will have to wait much longer before getting vaccinations. These are things that we have to take into, uh, into account so that, yes, we're looking to try and encourage everyone to get vaccinated as quickly as possible, but we're not discriminating and bringing in unfairness in the process at the same time. You deserve better. You deserve a government that's going to continue to say, get vaccinated. And you know what? If you don't want to get vaccinated, that's your choice. But don't think you can get on a plane or a train besides vaccinated people and put them at risk. We've seen situations where uh, conservative backbenchers have referred to some of this government's decisions as tyrannical in terms of how we're uh, make, creating mandates for vaccination of public servants or vaccination of people on trains and airplanes. No bigger thing out there than making sure Canadians are safe right now and they don't even think that everyone getting on a plane or a train should be vaccinated. Or even that their own candidates should all be vaccinated. That's unacceptable. Well, the answer to tyranny is to have an election. And I think people who disagree uh, with this government or disagree with this direction uh, should have an opportunity to make themselves heard. And that's what this election is all about. It's allowing Canadians to weigh in.
It's allowing Canadians to be heard, allowing Canadians to, in this moment where we are uh, so strongly vaccinated and looking towards the future, not just the end of this pandemic, but how we build back better, looking for an opportunity to make sure the decisions being taken in Parliament and by government are reflected, are reflective of the hopes and dreams of Canadians. Doesn't it seem odd that Trudeau is using the term build back better that Biden brought up some months back? Anyone following the global news, not living in a bubble, should see that all countries' leaders are simply puppets working together to achieve the same end goal. They are all complicit in your misery. Seems kind of cute that they use the 666, the satanic symbolism and everything, like some goth kid that thinks being evil is cool. I mean, who knows if these leaders just want to enact their high school fantasies of playing with cute emo boys while listening to Green Day. And hey, I can't blame them because it's funner than the shit most people are doing now. Are you trying to be cool? Yeah, I used to f guys cool. like you in high school. <laughs> <laughs> I knew, I knew you were I mean, I feel like a broken record, but we made a video about China's social credit system as well as one on Skynet, so many videos on the Wi-Fi surveillance. The average person is incapable of understanding how evil and sinister these people are. Believing the government has good intentions while every aspect of their being has been tainted by their own government for their entire lives. The average person is, is generally good. They do the right thing. But these people that have gotten to the top are the worst of the worst. You know, everyone acknowledges there's evil people that do bad things, but oh, it can never be my own government doing it to me. You know, at least uh, vegans will have a high social credit score avoiding meat and staying inside all day because they can't leave the toilet. Uh, so thank you guys for joining me today. Uh, if you could please drop a like on the video. You know, I, none of that shit matters. I, I guess go to frank and uh, support me through my businesses before... Uh, I keep saying I'm going to lose it in every video, but we're getting closer day by day.